So this is a video for Malhei and I'm glad you brought up these wonderful discussions and um, let's get other people involved into this because this is extremely important. So you said that robots are not going to fix anything because you hold the position that it is um, biological life that will fix itself and always repair itself. And um, so this gets in, into the into more depths in philosophy. And you also said that if mind uploading is real, then life is not really worth anything. So I want to get into this. First of all, <coughs> I want to say <coughs> to all people, read the work by Dr. Ray Kurzweil, because he is the front runner in this, in the AI development. And he is a, a mega inve inventor, has always been since a child. <coughs> he is super genius, and he is also uh, one of the CEOs of Google, as I understand it. So um, anyway, and there, it is likely that uh, an AGI will come out of Google. So it's, I don't know. It is very possible because it's, it's a huge, huge conglomeration of um, people working together and really making something amazing happen. So far, uh, Google is my favorite company. So anyway, um, what the way I understand it is that according to Dr. Ray Kurzweil's um, system analytical computer system that he has that has predicted things into the future. This is a calculation operation that extrapolates into the future according to the past and the present. So he has been, this, this computer system has been very accurate with predicting things that actually happened in technological development in the past and, and also in, in political and, and socio-economic developments and pivotal points where it actually has it brought to the very year. So this is very, very interesting to me to see. And this is absolutely, this is, this is phenomenal, to say the least. So I'm not a techie person, so I'm extra in awe with that. But anyway, um, so I have been reading blogs about this over the last couple of years. I'm really interested in seeing this happen because as an activist, I want to see the development that will give humanity a guiding hand because obviously as an, an as the other computer developer, Dr. Ben Goetzel said in an interview, he was asked, um, aren't you afraid of the singularity and what will arise out of this for humanity and the dangers that are involved? They were talking about surveillance and surveillance and and the, the lack of privacy. And this is already happening. I mean, we have to get used to it. This is just part of existence now, OK? And it will become more and more part of existence. And as shy as I always used to be, you know, with this fact, with this given situation, there's no way for me to duck away and out of it. So I might just as well embrace it, right? I am being surveilled. Uh, probably as an activist, extra much. And I have nothing to hide. <laughs> so uh, might just as well tell them a little bit more about myself, right? Like, hey, I'm Nicola, uh, armchair activist. So, but anyway, um, what he, what Ben Goetze was getting into, 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 the, into the question, is there a threat? And he said, yes, there is a danger, of course, but now comes the real, real base statement that I wholeheartedly agree with. If we don't get 
the singularity and the AGIs, the Artificial General Intelligence Robots, then humanity is guaranteed to do itself in. Okay? So, now, we have two options. Humanity left alone, with, like a toddler who plays with fire, you know, will the, it's just a matter of time until humanity is going to ruin not just itself, but everything else, too, on this planet. And then, you know, if there's life, if there's some lucky life left, it could be some cockroaches, you know, or some praying, uh, what are the sun goddess insects, you know, that praying mantra or whatever they're called. Yeah, they could be left over and something completely new can create itself out of that. Yeah, it is, if we step away from the big picture and look at it, we say, okay, well, if that's what it wants to do, then maybe that's what it should do, okay? But there could be another option, okay? We can bring in a nanny system, and this nanny system will consist of artificial intelligence that oversees the entire picture and is not bogged down by religion and social acceptance and fear of uh, social rejection and uh, political correctness and those kind of things, you know. They will go straight to the core of the nitty-gritty and they will say it the way it is. They will say it right into people's faces. They will say the truth right into everyone's face. Hey man, you got a problem here with your, you're trying, you're, you're afraid to lose your clientele, you know. You think you're an environmental, uh, whatever, manager of an environmental organization to save the wetlands, but you are making a deal with Monsanto. Hello! And they will say it right into their faces. They will say right into the face of, let's say, and, and I am using those who are... I'm 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 using minor examples here. You know, the the real blatant ones, of course, are the Monsanto, and those are the the ones who and they don't they don't they they even admit that they are bad, <laughs> at least to their friends. You know? So, but um, they have uh, enough leverage to manipulate everyone around and use market psychologists and so on and so on. But even the little willies are lying and and um, they are and they are they're even more deceptive, you know, because they want to fundraise and they put that above their own initial cause that they were working on. So that's wh that's why I'm saying be careful people who you're donating money to, you know. Don't give your money to Greenpeace. They are completely infiltrated inside out. They're like the warm is in it. Uh, the corporate warm is in that organization. It cannot be trusted anymore. They are on the side of the the sealing industry and the whaling industry, like exactly reversed from what it started out to be. Because they are now only a corporation that are preying on people's donations. They are preying on people not knowing about Greenpeace. So so who, do you, who to give money to? To those who really protect the oceans and the world. Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Those are the only police that that police the oceans, the, the whale sanctuaries. No one else is doing anything there. It's, it's called whale sanctuary, but there's no police, except for Sea Shepherd, and they will go in and they will protect the whales. They're the only ones. And then they're being slandered, they're being hated, and um, then people will believe the slander against them and, and so on. See, see, this is just one out of gazillions of examples that I'm talking about. And corruption happens, and most people jump on the bandwagon of the corporate agenda 
Ber Bernie Sanders campaign is one perfect example. This whole person and campaign was only created from nothing, only created to take votes away from Hillary Clinton to, because they were hoping that would cause enough division and cause enough people to leave so that the opposite opposition would be winning. Huh? That was the, the whole plan from the beginning on. And they were aiming for someone more corporate than Donald Trump to win. So now it's quite a bummer for the, the Republican Party. So anyway, um, you see, it's all these things. If you really get into the nitty gritty and read between the lines and read it all and compare it and really, really go beyond what you or what most people want to hear and you really look at the truth, then you will see it will just unravel itself right in front of you what is actually going on. That's why I'm hoping to get people into this and get people to pay more attention you know, with my blogs, with my comments, with my videos, and so on. I don't know what else to do. This is all I can do. I, I can't do anything else. This is my right to do this, you know, this is, I'm practicing my freedom of speech, I'm practicing the rights that I have at this point in time, you know. If this changes and if, let's say, the Muslim community takes over governing planet Earth, then I will probably commit suicide. So I'm not going to stick around with those people, okay? I just want to make that very clear. But if we want to make the world a better place, if we don't want to suffer anymore, then we need to get into into the real questions and and completely abandon religion. Okay. Thank you, Paul. So nice of you. So anyway, um, I want to get into this really seriously. So the, the AGIs will stand as a repair function for planet Earth, okay, and for all of us. It will serve all of us, you know. We have a few good people. Hillary Clinton uh, is among them, okay, and Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton has done huge help for this country and for the whole planet, actually. It has, has that much leverage. But people don't believe it because they believe the propaganda, see? The propaganda comes from the corporations. She who is hated the most is the best candidate. Remember that, okay? As long as we have people like Richard Berman putting out market psychological propaganda for the, the corporations being paid big money for that. He has an, an entire fake nonprofit organization that he, under which he works, under which he puts out these types of slanders and slanderous blogs and so on, called Center for Consumer Freedom, uh, in quotation marks. I put the quotation marks into it. There is no freedom in what Richard Berman is doing, not even for himself. He's, he is cutting his own throat with this and his own liver, definitely. Yeah. This, is not, this is not the state of living and life that I envision. This is not wholesome living. This is not communication. This is not respect. This is not being in tune with yourself and the life around you. You know, being in tune means not deception, no lies, no denial. Okay? Being in tune means being radically honest. A real friend is someone who will say the truth straight into our faces without deliberately hurting us, without meaning to, without, without hostile words, but the truth, the way it is. You're not a f we're not a friend to someone if we go along with their lies. That's not helping them. So 
And in that sense, I want to clear up a lot of those things in my videos. And be, I am your friend, all of your friend. Okay? I am here to be your friend. I'm here to help you and give you the truth on it. I've lived quite a long life. I have come around, baby. I have seen things. I have read a lot of stuff. I know what I'm talking about. I have compared things. I have made connections. Lots and lots and lots of connections. It just keeps on doing it by itself. And I wake up giving a lecture every day. You know, it's, 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 it's almost painful. But that's why I have this, I have this incredible, there's an incredible drive inside of me. You can call it crazy. It's a drive inside of me that needs to say these things. It's like when you see injustice happening and you see, you know, let's take a really simplistic example. Children are watching a puppet theater. And the Caspar, you know, which is the main protagonist in the puppet theater, the Caspar walks along this, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. he's singing some kind of song, you know, in that, um, in that idyllic I picture of that, of that stage for the puppets. And behind him comes the crocodile, as they always use the crocodile as this archetypical, image of um, nah, he's going to nip you in the butt. And um, so the, the, the children are saying, Caspar, we see that the crocodile is going to nip you in the butt. And the Caspar says, what? I don't see a crocodile. You must be imagining things. And the kids go, no, there is the crocodile behind you. And he's coming closer. And the Casper says, no, I don't believe it. I'm just going to do, 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 do. And the kids are screaming, Casper, he's coming even closer. And he doesn't listen. And then, snap, the, the crocodile nips him in the butt. And the Casper says, ow, that hurt. OK, so <laughs> and on the same note, I um, basically, like the children, I say to the corporate world, crocodile is going to nip you in the butt. And it is your own crocodile that you created. It is your own your own toothy jaw that you all created for yourselves. And I'm warning you and I want to shake people up and I just want to, it's, it's, it's it's actually sanity, you know. So according to Jiddu Krishnamurti, he would say this is sanity. It would be actually not sanity not to say something. Do you understand what I mean? Like if you see a danger, most people don't even see the danger. So most people don't want to see the danger. And that's not very sane either, yeah? not to want to see the not to want to be informed, not to, to be like, Oh, let's do positive thinking, and um, somehow it will somehow it will do itself in, and that will be from a wider perspective that will be good when the cockroaches survive. And all. But I don't think that is actually in all of your best interest, right? So, if you want to really look at it, look at the the facts, and your personal best interest is to preserve all life on earth okay for all of us we're all interdependent we need each other we need the trees we need the oceans to stay alive paul watson said if the oceans die we die it's a fact okay there is there is absolutely no debate over this and people are killing the oceans as we speak all the time every second that is counting the ocean is struggling more and more and more and more through overfishing, through underwater sonar devices that are causing the whales to bleed to death. Okay? This is my major campaign since two, so, 2002. I have been doing this. I've been petitioning on the street of LA to get signatures. I've sent thousands and thousands of signatures to politicians in this regard because I felt I felt like I could only exist 
standing with that petition board in front of the store to even to even handle living because I was so scared. I was so afraid. You know. All of this is happening. You know. So let's wake up. Uh, let's wake up and do it better. And I don't quite uh, see that we can wake everyone up. It would be nice. Prove me wrong. You know, I want to wake everyone up, and I want every single person, every single person who is in denial and who doesn't respect himself or herself and chases after a celebrity or tries to make herself look like this or that person in complete denial of themselves. All of these people that are so preoccupied with body image and 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 those types of things that are that are so painful, you know, or or committing suicide over a boyfriend who left, all these things that they have written themselves into a realm that is completely void of of connection. There's it's utter fragmentation. So that if we if we can fix this, if we can bring this back together, if we can do it, if we it has to be done very fast. You have to talk to people about this. Everyone needs to start talking about this in order to fix this. We do it as soon as possible, right now. Okay? Right now it has to be done. And if it's not done, then I don't see any other option other than the the singularity the 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 AGI nanny system to step in <coughs> and to fix things and to bring people into order and to to or organize and order things in a way that will immediately relieve planet earth from the burdens of toxicity that will immediately shut down production of pesticides. It will shut down Monsanto altogether. It will shut down nuclear power stations and every manufacturer of toxin, toxic items. It will free all animals from the testing facilities. Okay? This is extremely unethical, and it puts an incredible burden on the entire planet in, t in, in, t in, t in terms of energy and, and, and guilt and, and, and extreme suffering. It's a suffering energy that people absorb. And all of this needs to be immediately shut down. As, as soon as, the sooner the better. Yeah. So I am just, uh, like a child in a puppet theater saying the crocodile is going to nip you in the butt, what are you going to do then? So um, most of them are not listening. They, th they will twist it and make me look like I am some, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a broco witch. <laughs> this is one favorite quote from one of those shitty TV shows that there were probably worked on. They, they were they were collaborated with with Richard Berman together. I am sure that Richard Berman had his fingers in those shows like Law and Order and stuff like this. So I don't know if you know any of the of these old TV shows, but that's what I have observed. I see. I observe these things. I browse through back when we had TV. We don't have TV anymore. But when I was browsing through, I um, would just turn something on for a few minutes and there I would see it right in front of me. It would be so crystal clear and I would also always just happen to hit these very moments in these shows where it became so obvious what they are doing, you know, the kind of brainwashing they were doing with their audience, with the viewers. So I was just collecting more and more and more and more of this and um, got myself some really nifty picture together about it, what, what brainwashing in the United States in particular is really all about. So I want to get to your other question that you said, if mind uploading is real, then life is not really worth anything. So. A lot of people hold this position on it, and um, 
from what I have been observing is that it does come from a religious mindset. So I don't know if you're religious or what religion you belong to or uh, what your what your beliefs or views are. Um, some people, they, they think of themselves, oh, I used to be a Catholic, now I'm an atheist. Be careful because as the Catholics always said, once, once you have a child from seven, you have them for life, which means people are indoctrinated on the very deepest levels. In order to get that indoctrination on, oh, this really, the, the really core, the core brainwashing of things, like the core values, you know, where you think, oh, this value comes from me, from myself. Be careful, because it usually does come from the brainwashing and the the permanent, continuous uh, indoctrination that happened from childhood on. So most people have been into this from birth. Yeah. So we have to be very careful about what our values really are. So and the fear of death. First of all, this is also something that Jiddu Krishnamurti and the two Davids, as I call them, have really gotten into it with their, in their discussions at Brockwood Park, England. That's a school that he founded. I really um, highly recommend to people to watch these discussions. There are seven elemental discussions about this subject of existence and death. And and this perception of living and, and of the values and of people, people's perceptions of themselves, the self-image. What is the self? What is the ego? What is this, all of that? And they're really getting into it. And um, I've watched every one of them over and over and over again because it is so complex and it is so rich I've never heard any discussion this rich. You know. This is richer than the books by Friedrich Nietzsche or any of the nihilists or any of the nihilist theater plays or or the 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 ones who question politics. This is gets much, much, much deeper into the nitty gritty, you know. So into into those types of questions, you know. So so you think that if mind uploading is real, then life is not really worth anything. Ask yourself, why Why do you come to this conclusion? You know, why, why do you see life not worth anything if things become slowly computerized, if brains become computerized, if people become cyborgs, if, if they slowly merge into a machine and uh, ends up to be just machines and um, not biological beings anymore. So there are many different things that can happen that can unfold. You know, it can unfold that Humanity, that's what I've always been saying, hu humanity might split okay, into two separate species in time. This is very likely to happen. I already see a split happening right now. Highly intellectual women cannot date. They just cannot get themselves to date someone who is... Um, sexist or racist or speciesist. They just cannot do it. It's just impossible. They cannot exchange body fluids with someone like this. It, it's like it's like icky to them, you know. So that's why I always say I, I see a lot of those crude guys. They want to, I want to do them pita chicks. You know? So, and I say to them, if you want to do a pita chick, Man, you you better become a vegan, right? 
that they don't want to do. So they're not going to do a Peter Chick then. It's as simple as that. And that's just one out of thousands of examples. You know, This is where humanity is zipping apart biologically zipping apart because we are creating two separate um, enclaves of living you know so it's like in the past uh, species would zip apart if they don't meet each other anymore if there is a mountain range between them okay or an ocean today in with humans with human society we have created this mentally. We have created mental enclaves. We have created a mental division among us. It's, it, in many cases, it's not voluntary. You know, it just happens. It is part of evolution, I would say. You know, And there's nothing to cry about or to feel bad about. It's just the way it is. What I'm trying to say with my videos is if someone feels ashamed of themselves because they feel like they are they are part of the crude workers, yeah. then what I'm saying is I invite you to fix it and not be a crude worker anymore. And if you just can't help being a crude worker, then don't cry over it. Accept yourself the way you are. Don't measure yourself to someone who is more intellectual than you are. Don't hate that person and don't have feel the need to chop his head off because he is more intellectual. You know why measure yourself? Why make yourself miserable over it? If you are a worker, enjoy your worker life. If you are a squirrel in the tree, here, here he is. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, you cute little thing, you know. They are all, all precious beings. Squirrels and workers and intellectuals and, and trees. There he is. You are such, a, such an amazing acrobat you are. Yes. Such an amazing, amazing being. And it's so, so much fun to be sitting. Oh, look at that. He's lying down. Can you see that? He's lying down in the tree there. Oh, baby, love. Oh, my gosh, I love you. He's lying there and listening to, to me talk to him. Sweet, sweet talk. Oh, my gosh, that's so sweet. So, you know, all of these different existences they are not comparing themselves to one another. The, the chipmunk doesn't compare himself to the squirrel, you know, because the squirrel is bigger than the chipmunk, you know, or the rat is bigger than the, than the chipmunk, or the chipmunk is bigger than a mouse. You know. So they don't do this. They, don't, they don't also don't think that far. They, they don't go, go there. They don't have the brain to go into these types of comparisons. You know. It's kind of tragic, the brain that's kind of stuck in between freedom and under that radar of comparison. So that's why Friedrich Nietzsche always said the human is some sort of hybrid, you know, some sort of dangerous regression, actually. So that's why we need to, we need to look into it and we need to we need to ask these very serious questions who am i and what do i aspire to what do i want if i aspire to something and and unfold if i want to unfold myself if i want to be part of um, if i want to have a girlfriend for example who is a vegan and who is kind hearted and very compassionate would make a good mother for my child you know then it would be advisable for me that I aspire to become more like her to if I if I stop eating meat, if I stop hunting, if I stop being crude, you know, being the crude worker, and maybe I will start to evaluate my worker situation. Is this really worth living? Is it worth living? I'm asking you, because you asked the the question, is it worth living if we have the singularity? My question is, is it really worth living to work in a factory? No. 
To me personally, it's not. Okay. I could not live a life like this. I would rather, I mean, I would do all kinds of shit before I do that. So I'm serious, you know. That I would not be willing to do because that is not freedom for me to be working eight hours or ten hours in a factory or in a sweatshop every day. You know. that, that would not be worth it. Then I would have to, I would have to exit. And I'm not that attached to life that much. So it doesn't mean that much this existence right here. You know, it's just it's. I see it way more relative than that. So my values are way, way, way outside of my own of my own need to survive or need to be here or all of this. The, the reason why I'm here, the reason why I, I'm doing all of this is because I feel very strong responsibility and real strong need to be here for my dog, number one, okay? To be here for the other animals, the squirrels, the, the life around me, and to be here also for other people and for children and to be a mentor and to be someone who can offer something, something of substance that I see other channels are not offering. Most other channels are not offering it. There are a handful of good people in this world who I recommend way be before myself, of course. No. Paul Watson, I regard as the highest minded person on earth. Okay. And um, and also and then come many other people that are fantastic after him. Okay. So fantastic, fantastic people, high minded souls, much more evolved than myself. And I'm just as I said, I'm an armchair activist. I try to bring this information forth to the world and I do it as good as I can. So my meaning of life, the meaning of life is feeling joy, is being in the flow. Feeling joy is being in the flow of life. But that means not be in resistance, not be ever in resistance to the past, the present, or the future. Yeah. And to really let yourself flow in this present moment you know, because this is where you're breathing right now you're always breathing in the right now so breathe in the now and flow with that so i've gone through many stages in my life many difficult ex excruciating stages of mind and suffering so I know what I'm talking about. I have I have investigated this for myself. It's this is not just uh, Kundalini reading or yoga or Zen or whatever I am reading on the internet. Th these things I have gone through myself, and I can tell you from my own first-hand experience that the the meaning of life is being in the flow of now. Yeah. Right now is the moment of living. That doesn't mean you have to forget about the past and, or the future. The, the past is there for us to learn from. To, for us, this is a huge learning experience, the past. It's a school, hard school of, for most people, for most beings. Okay? Then move on from there and plan for the future. We have to do planning. This is part of our responsibility. We can't just be hanging there in our chairs and watch soap operas and go to a bar at night. That's not planning. Then the crocodile will definitely nip you in the butt if, if you're doing that every day. Huh? Or if you're spending your money on, on crap or movies or, or alcohol or something. Huh? Or other entertainment things or, or toxic substances or recreational drugs or whatever people do. You know? This is really irresponsible. This is this is worse than death, you know? not just this, the existence of that is worse than death, but it's also worse than death in terms of lack of responsibility. This is being part of the problem, not part of the solution. If you want to be part of the solution, you have to completely quit all of these irresponsible things right now. You also have to quit eating meat. You'll save 
a lot of money a lot of money and in the summertime and, and in, in fall there are so many opportunities for people who have very little money to go out with the backpack and go to um, a, a public place publicly owned like BML land or city property where there's an apple tree hanging over the moment the apple tree branch hangs over into the city property you have the right to pick an apple there, okay and you can pick apples in there are so many places to harvest juicy wonderful apples and eat them so there's no need to there's no excuse for people to say oh vegan food costs more no it doesn't it absolutely does not raw vegan food is your is your life giver okay and in of in many many cases it doesn't cost anything you know it's free you can just go out there and um, trees are hanging over into streets you can pick dates and figs and apples and pears and um, in the tropical zones you can pick all kinds of things avocados and carob and oranges and amazing stuff we picked a lot in LA yeah? so when we walked the dogs at night and the there were fig trees for example right on city property growing on the street and then and and later on the person who bought that house cut those beautiful trees off and I cried over that I thought that was so sad I guess they because they they, they felt like they needed more sunlight or something yeah, because they were large and 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 and, and abundant trees and I've never seen such large amazing vital fig trees and I've never tasted something that wonderful in my entire life so what a horribly detached person that is who would cut these trees down but it's this is what I mean uh, you know that's why we need to we need to heal this okay and people can feed themselves there are so many millions of opportunities out there there is no excuse to sit down and slump down and say oh i don't have lim i don't have these options i am poor or whatever you know you have a lot of options at all times just open your eyes people you know this is i want to say this to all these people that I've been talking to, I've been talking to thousands of people who have been complaining to me from all around the globe, complaining to me and begging money from me too, you know, who've been complaining and and who feel entitled or who feel like they are they deserve more or we need to or they asking me to petition for them, you know, no, they are they can speak. They are not voiceless. Okay? I, my clients are the voiceless ones. You can speak for yourself. You can go out and collect fruits. You can learn. You have. You can go get yourself a cheap computer and go on the internet and do a lot of reading. Read for eight hours every day. Okay? And why your life will be turning completely 180 degrees completely complete empowerment no more dependency no more resentment because of that you know. if you are empowered you don't have resentment anymore against any, anymore armando particularly you know. read learn stop eating meat stop being violent then you don't need to be uh, in resentment to me or anyone else or the peter chicks that you want so much you know. You don't have to be in resentment. Or Elliot Roger, for example, who re resented women because he couldn't have them. But he couldn't have them because he resented them. See how this works? So, for many men that are they're absolutely violent to, and brutal verbally. To, how, how are you going to date a woman if you're verbally violent? Right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So I want people to start to understand these things. you know. And um, so... 
life can become a singularity. Maybe there will be robots that humanity splits in two. There will be also robots. There will be hybr hybrids like cyborgs. There will be lots of different machines. Things will be different and they things will be gentler and kinder for planet Earth. So because the higher the intelligence of the machine, the clearer the picture of what's going on and the causalities of what's the, what's the cause of this going wrong, you know? This will be very crystal clear. This, this cannot be understood as long as people are fragmented and holding on to an image of, of self, you know, as long as they, they, um, they are dependent on a clientele or dependent on making sales or dependent on self-image pre preservation or social acceptance and those kind of things. So if we, the machines will have a wider vision, they will do better planning, they will take care of things better, then we'll still have worker humans, we'll still have intellectual humans, we, have, we will have cyborgs and we will have machine, machine people, okay? And um, this is likely what's, what's going, going to happen. And uh, it's kind of like a rat race right now between the, 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 the takeover of radical religions and the development of the machines that will dismantle rel religion altogether because religion is extremely unhealthy for humans, extremely unhealthy for humans and for all life on earth. Religions are, are the major cause of the destruction of planet earth. I, mean, I want people to really let that sink in. And that's why we need the nanny system desperately. So uh, life is worth living at any moment in time, whether you are a machine, an animal, or a human, it doesn't matter. Why life is worth living the moment you are in the flow and you are just going with the flow, uh, going with it. You're, you're crying when you're sad. You're not suppressing it. You're not in resistance to an emotion. You're not in resistance to love. You are going with it all the way. You know what I mean? And that is joy and that is the meaning of life. So this is my view on it. So it's always worth living through it, you know. And for, for some people it is very, very rough. Some people are they feel very cornered and they are close to committing suicide. And I've been there two times. I have attempted suicide two times. I know I have been through all of this, believe me. So and that's why I want to help and I want to say Let's empower our, ourselves so that we don't have to get into that state, so that we can live this life. This living is an opportunity, you know. This existence that I live right now is an opportunity for me to make something out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, it can, it can always happen that someone just cannot continue, but I want to help. I want to embrace all of these people. I want to, there was a lady in Holland, and she, in Holland, they have a, a an assisted suicide program also for people who have, like, such devastating depression that no medication has helped, and medication hasn't helped me either. Yeah? So. I saw this documentary, it's on YouTube, and she was in her early 20s, a beautiful woman, would, could have been a photo model, like six foot tall, very slender, beautiful, elegant body and face, and sophisticated face, and intelligent, and very serious person but so depressed that she could not go on and she signed up for this and they have euthanized her. So I, I cried a lot when I saw that because, and my husband, when he, he saw it too, and he said, we could have taken her hiking, for example, you know, we could have shown her nature. And 
made her feel good for the first time in her life, you know, taken her out of this, out of this uh, very limited, lopsided view on things. This just the city, and this these other people, and probably comparisons and so on, and 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 the coldness of other people. You know, a lot of sensitive people they just can't, they just go down under this the insensitivities. So I would have. I would have um, hold, held her in my arms. You know, I would have shown her nature and the squirrels and the chipmunks and, and the rats and shown her that it is possible to be living life in the, in the now, in the flow, you know, with all the tears, with all the compassion, deep compassion, with all the love. And that is also joy. You know, in this, the, to feel this, to really feel it and allow yourself to feel it. That is the meaning of life. And it's always worth living. This is, that, that's just what I have to say to this. So let me know what you think. And um, I hope you make me video. And we'll talk later. Take care. Bye-bye.